Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. I am out on the Tiger Sport 660 today and I'm testing something that's a little bit strange since it's 100 degrees out right now, but uh, I'm testing out the official Triumph heated grips. One of the reasons why I wanted to install these before the winter is because uh, winter items like this tend to go out of stock um, right around this time or shortly after. September, October, that kind of stuff usually sells out might be kind of hard to find so I picked these up a couple months ago and and finally got around to doing the install so if you're interested in how to install these things then stick around I'll show you how I did it I am in the garage today and I'll be installing the official Triumph heated grip kit these grips are internally wired for a nice clean fit and they feature three temperature settings controlled by a button integrated into the left hand grip. I'll have a link in the description for the parts. The method I used to do the install today is directly from the Triumph install document. So this may not be the only way to complete this install. So just keep that in mind. Here's a look at the heated grip sub harness. The black connector plugs into the bike's main wiring harness. On the other end are two white connectors that go into each of the grips. There's a two pin and a three pin connector on this side. The three pin goes to the left side grip since that's the one with the control switch. The rest of the parts in the box include two rubber wire straps, a couple new bar end screws, new screws and washers for the left hand grip, two screws for securing the switch housing to the left grip, and of course the two heated grips. So here you can see the left grip has one single button to turn on the grips and cycle through the three heat settings. So these grips ship with the wires stored inside of the grips. So you'll need to pull these out before you start the install process. Since we're installing an electrical component today, the first step will be to remove the seat and disconnect the battery terminals. Next, the left side panel needs to be removed to access the bike's wiring harness. First, gently push the center of the fastener Now it can be removed and reset for later. The side panel is removed by holding both sides and pulling straight out away from the bike. This panel is held on with a combination of friction mounts into rubber grommets and a couple of spring clips. Now that the bike is prepped, we can start the install. First, the bar end covers need to be removed. These screws are four millimeters. The kit includes new screws for these, so these old ones don't have to be saved. The bar end covers need to be saved though because we'll be reinstalling those at the end. Next, the stock grips need to be removed. The left grip is held on by two T20 screws, one on the top and one on the bottom. This kit also includes new screws for these, so the old ones don't have to be saved. With the screws removed, the grip just slides off. The right grip is removed by unscrewing the two screws holding the switch housing together. These screws will need to be saved. Remove the top of the housing and the grip will slide off. Pay attention to the orientation of the right grip. 
This grip is keyed to fit into the twist grip connector so that it can control the throttle properly. Now that the grips are removed, we can start with the wiring. Now here's where the handlebar risers will help the install on the Tiger Sport. There's a small hole in the bottom of the bars that we need to feed the cables through. First, the sub harness needs to be threaded through the wire cable guide. Now this is in front of the top yoke and you'll be pulling the cable from the underside before threading the leads into the handlebars. Do not connect the sub harness to the main wiring harness of the bike yet. It'll be easier to route the sub harness this way with it unplugged. Feed the sub harness lead with the three pin connector into the handlebars towards the left hand side grip and out through the slot in the handlebar end. Next, feed the lead with the two pin connector into the bar towards the right hand grip. Leave just enough slack to be able to reach the end connectors. I'll start with plugging in the left grip to the three pin connector, making sure that the switch connector faces the rider side. Once plugged in, the slack needs to be pulled back through the bar to prevent the cable from binding or getting pinched. This will also make sure that we have enough slack to make it back to the main wiring harness on the other end of the sub harness. To secure the grip, we're gonna install the two screws and washers provided in the kit and tighten those to 2.5 Newton meters. Next, we'll fit the upper and lower switch housings that came with the new kit onto the left grip and install the Torx head self-tapping screws provided with the kit. We're gonna tighten these screws to one Newton meter. Now for the right grip. Plug in the two pin connector and pull the cable slack back through the bar until the grip is properly seated into the twist grip connector. Now this is very important on this one. Make sure on the right grip that there's enough slack in the wires for the twist grip to rotate to its full range of movement. You do not want this side to bind up after you're on the road. Once the right grip is seated and moves freely, you wanna reinstall the top switch housing with the screws removed earlier, and then tighten those to 2.5 Newton meters. At this point, I reinstalled the bar ends. That way I could test out the throttle grip. Next, the heated grip sub harness will be routed to the main wiring harness. So these cables are gonna go towards the left-hand side of the front headstock opening. Once through there, it's gonna go out through the left side rear headstock opening. Now for the main wiring harness. This is located in the area behind the left side panel that was removed earlier. You'll need to unclip the main wiring harness connector from the back of the support molding. Then you'll need to remove the blanking plug so that you can plug it into the sub harness. Next, find the end of the sub harness that was fed through the headstock opening and plug it into the main wiring harness. Reclip the harness to the bodywork support molding. Now that everything's plugged in, the included rubber straps can be used to tidy up the cables.
Finally, it's time to reinstall the side panel, reconnect the battery, and reinstall the seat. The install is complete, but we still need to do a couple things. We want to power up the bike, make sure the grips are working. Then we'll have to go into the settings, set up our time and date again, and turn on any other devices like Bluetooth module or shift assist module in the menu system. These will turn off every time you disconnect the battery. They have to be reactivated before you can use them again. Now, I'm not going to be covering the time and date setup in detail in this video, but let me know if that's something you'd like to see in a future video. Looking at the menu, I can see that the grips are working. So now that I'm out on the road, basically there's nothing else to do once these are installed. You don't have to activate them in the menu system or take it to the dealer to have it activated um, like some things like um, the Bluetooth module, for instance, or the Triumph Shift Assist where you can go ahead and install it on your own, but if you want it to work, you've got to take it to the dealer and have them mess with it. They've got to reprogram the computer or something like that and activate them in the computer system of the motorcycle so that it'll actually show up in the menu. So to turn on these grips, once they've been installed, just push the button once. You'll see a little red icon on the dashboard and uh, that's the hottest setting that you can get for it. Press it a second time, it'll go down into orange mode, which is not quite as hot as the red mode. And then there's a third option, which is a yellow mode. And that's uh, even more mild than the other two. So I'm going to put this on red mode right now and uh, yeah, it's going to get quite toasty. I can feel them warming up already within a matter of about maybe 10 or 15 seconds. I'm sure it'll take about a minute or so for them to get all the way to the highest temperature. Now I've, I've heard from others that the Triumph heated grips aren't the hottest around, that you can get some aftermarket ones that will be a lot higher temperature, but that's really not what I was looking for. The, even if they aren't as hot as some of the other solutions that are out there, um, just having the fully integrated ones without having a separate selector module that I have to mount to the handlebars or anything like that, the fully integrated system works better for my needs. and. Again, I live in Arizona, so I need a, a little bit of assistance from heated grips, but it's not like I'm in a uh, completely frozen climate where I need, um, you know, the max heat that I can possibly get out of, out of a device um, just to keep it comfortable enough to get to work or something, you know. But just checking these settings right now, um, I'm not going to have any issues at all. I actually got some some uh, hand guards that I'll be installing for here in a future video. Um, but I also got some winter gloves that are, are pretty good um, on the tops and the, the bottom side of the gloves are a little bit thinner. So that way, um, if you have heated grips like in this situation, that heat will be able to, to go through the bottom of the gloves and, and make it to your hands. So it should be nice and comfortable. Anyway, that's about it for this video, guys. I just wanted to, to get this out on the street. I didn't want to drain my battery too much, and I was already going for a ride to record some other stuff, too. So I figured I'd test out these grips, give you guys a little update on their effectiveness. Wow, these are, it's really hot. I'm going to put it in the lowest setting right now just to see what it feels like. But uh, yeah, I, I know I'm just testing these things out, by, but it's already hot, so. You know, again, these uh, these grips might not heat up quite as fast if it wasn't 100 degrees out, but uh, 
<laughs> so just keep that in mind. But yeah guys, install was a success. Both of these things work and uh, I don't feel any difference in the throttle at all. Um, now that there's an extra cable in there that's spinning around every time you twist the throttle, I thought that uh, I might notice some kind of binding or something like that hesitation with that extra cable in there. But it's a pretty thin cable to be honest. And uh, it just kind of sits in there and it doesn't it doesn't turn all the way around in a full circle so kind of just slides to one side and then goes back when you let go of the throttle so it shouldn't be an issue so that's about it guys if you like the video if you found it useful somehow then please give me a like and i will catch you guys on the next one